Hey everybody, welcome to today's lesson. We're going to discuss a couple of concepts related to the appearance of a parabola. And the first concept is known as the focal width, aka the focal diameter, aka the lattice rectum. And the second skill that we're going to use is, uh, we're going to learn is that of finding intercepts. So I'm going to start off just asking you a question, which is to find the length of the lattice rectum, that is the length of that black line that's on the screen. If the absolute value of p is the distance from the vertex of the focus of a parabola, and we labeled that distance on the picture, find the length of the black line segment and be able to explain how you know your answer. Try it. Really just think about how long is that black line in terms of p, and we'll go over it in a second. First thing is to realize that there are kind of two, there's a distance of 2p from the focus to the directrix. And that means that this distance from the point to the directrix is going to be 2p as well, because it's the same length uh, as just drawn on the other side of the, of the focus. And that also means we know that this side is the absolute value of 2p. And the reason we know that is because every point on a parabola is equidistant from the focus and the directrix. So that point has the same distance to the focus as it is to the directrix, they're both equal to 2p. And because of symmetry, that means that the entirety of that black line is gonna be double 2p, which is 4p. So the distance is going to be the absolute value of 4p. Now why the absolute value? Because distances are always positive, um, but if p was positive in the beginning, you didn't need to write all those absolute values there. So the length of the lattice rectum is always going to be the absolute value of 4p. And this is a very convenient result because 4p appears in the formula. And so you see it right there in the formula for a vertical parabola and for a horizontal parabola, there's always a 4p directly in the formula. So here's a very quick check to see if you understood. How long is the lattice rectum for the following equation? Okay, if you got what the previous slide said, this shouldn't take very long at all the number next to the thing that isn't squared, next to the variable expression that isn't squared, is the lattice rectum once you take the absolute value of it. So 4p is negative 20 in this case, the absolute value is just going to be 20, and therefore the focal width in this case, as I showed you on Desmos, is going to be 20 exactly. The second skill we're gonna to learn today is about intercepts. Uh, intercepts are points on the graph where the graph crosses the x-axis or you can think of it, the x-axis intercepts steps in the middle of the graph. So an interception in football or soccer is when someone gets in the middle of a path. And so this is when the axis gets in the middle of a path. And in order to find x-intercepts, you set y equal to zero and solve for x. And that's because y equals zero is the x-axis. And to find y-intercepts, you set x equal to zero and solve for y because x equals zero is the y-axis. So task two is, without graphing the equation, find the x and y intercepts for x minus seven squared is equal to negative 20 times y minus two. Try it now. Okay, so we're going to find the x and y intercepts for this equation. And in order to find the y intercepts, or there could be one, there could be more than one in different instances, you set x equal to zero because the y axis is the line x equals zero. In other words, it consists of all the points where the x value is zero. And then you simplify one step at a time. So zero minus seven squared is 49. Then you can divide both sides by negative 20 to get a number is equal to y minus two. You can add two to both sides to have y is equal to that particular number. And then you could uh, solve it by hand or enter it in your calculator to get negative 0 0.45 is equal to y. That's the y value when x is zero. So the point zero, negative 0 0.45 is the y intercept. And that's the only one because algebraically, when we solved it, we only got one answer. Now, to find the x-intercepts, you let y equals equal zero, and then you simplify again. Now, at this point, when you take the square root of both sides of the equation, you have to remember that every positive number has two square roots, uh, the positive and the negative version, and so you get the equation x minus seven is equal to plus or minus square root of 40. And then you can add seven to both sides to get x is equal to plus or minus square root of 40 plus seven. You could also write that as seven plus or minus the square root of 40. And that's two different answers, one where the square root is positive and one where the square root is negative. 
And so that leaves you about 13.33 and 0 0.68 as the X values where the Y value is zero. So the points are 13.33, zero and 0 0.680. Again, these are approximations because square roots are irrational numbers unless they're perfect squares, uh, unless the, it's a square root of a perfect square. And so we have to round at some point. And you know the value that you have to round on depends on context or perhaps crudely what your teacher tells you to do. Um, now, this is what the picture looks like on Desmos. And as you see, the y-intercept is in fact 0, negative 0 0.45, and the x-intercepts are also appropriate. And you also see why there are two x-intercepts. It's because the uh, you know, parabola has a symmetrical structure. Now, the last task is just putting all the stuff we've learned together. So I'm giving you a formula for a parabola. y plus 3 squared is equal to negative 8x minus 4. And as you answer these questions, I also would like you to try to sketch the results of each of these questions. So is it a ver vertical or horizontal parabola? In what direction does it open? Where's the vertex? What is the distance from the vertex to the focus known as absolute value of P? What are the y-intercepts and x-intercepts? Uh, find the length of the lattice rectum, that is the focal width. Uh, write the coordinates of the focus and write the equation of the directrix. Please now take your time and try out this problem before viewing the solution. Okay, so we're gonna go through these answers. So first of all, we know it's horizontal because of the equation uh, where the y part is the squared part. So we know that's why it's gonna be horizontal and it's gonna to open to the left because that negative eight in the equation uh, tells us it moves leftward. So negative is left and down, positive is up and right. Now the vertex is given by the numbers in the equation, the h and the k, x minus four, the minus there implies that the h is just positive four and the y is negative three. So the vertex is gonna be right there at four, negative three. The distance from the vertex to the focus is two, okay? P is negative two, the absolute value of P is positive two. And you know that because four P is negative eight. If four P is negative eight, then P is gonna be negative two and the absolute value of P is gonna be two. So the focus is gonna be two to the left of the vertex, and the directrix is gonna to be two to the right of the vertex, okay? So the directrix is going to be x is equal to six, and the focus is going to be two, negative three. Lastly, we know the lattice rectum has a length of eight because that's literally the number in the equation. And so how do we get a length of eight? Well, the idea is you go four up and four down from the focus. It's a focal width. So you go up and down by four to get a grand total of eight for that lattice rectum. And as you see, it's gonna curve out to the left and uh, what is left is the y-intercepts and the x-intercepts. So let's do the y-intercepts and the x-intercepts part of this. The y-intercept um, you get, sorry, the x-intercept you get by making y equal to zero and you do a lot of algebra we could, which you can check to get the x-intercept. And similarly, you make x equal to zero to find the y intercept. This is very similar to the process we did for the last in the example. And I just wanna again remind you that if you have a square rooting of both sides, unless you know that one of them can't possibly be negative for some geometric or practical reason, there are two solutions here. And in this, this is a case where there'd be two y intercepts. And then we can draw them on our uh, grid by just counting up two almost three uh, for the top y intercept and, and a negative eight, almost negative nine really uh, to get the bottom one. And then uh, you can just carefully try to connect the dots. Uh, this uh, drawing, um, you know, is, is I, I used a computer for, so, but you just, you know, basically you know what a parabola looks like and can draw it, draw the arrows at the end to emphasize that it keeps on going and you've sketched a parabola without using technology. And if you were to graph this on Desmos, you'd find the same thing. So, so far we have learned a bunch of concepts, the different types of conic sections, uh, the concept of a focus and directrix, shifting of graphs, reflections of graphs, focus directrix formulas, graphing parabolas by hand, intercepts, the focal width, the general form of a conic section. Uh, and then next time we're gonna discuss the connections between the general form of a conic and the very particular focus directrix form we've learned. 
And so we have basically one more lesson about parabolas, and then we'll start exploring the other two types of conics, the ellipse and the hyperbola. Until then, have a great day.